Hello everyone and uh, first of all I want to say thanks very much again uh, to iCoach Kids for asking me to contribute to this webinar series and um, it's also great to be uh, co-presenting uh, uh, with uh, Jennifer from uh, Special Olympics, the biggest sports program for disabled people in the world and I've been lucky to be involved with Special Olympics uh, not just here in the UK uh, uh, in the motor activity training program, but also in, in other countries, in particular India, uh, where I've worked with them over a, a long period of time. Uh, so it's great to be part of this webinar series, but we don't have much time, so I'm going to uh, press on. The format for today, I'm going to uh, very quickly uh, do a short review of the step adaptation tool, because it has some uh, implications for the rest of the presentation. And then I'm going to look at four games families. Uh, in other words, four areas of games uh, that uh, coaches uh, and uh, teachers uh, will be presenting uh, to young people uh, in the course of their work. Uh, the four areas are target games, uh, net and wall games, striking and fielding games and finally invasion games and there is a kind of a progression uh, which I'll try to explain uh, as we go along. So the step adaptation tool is a very simple acronym which stands for four areas of any activity which we can adapt and modify in order to make that activity more inclusive. So the first one is space. And we can modify space, for example, by making the playing area larger or smaller. Larger means people may have to move about more. Smaller means it's more interactive. People are closer together and they interact more. It could be the uh, distance between an individual or individuals and a target. Or it could be modifying the existing sp uh, space or playing area, for example, creating zones so that uh, people can play in different parts of the playing area according to ability. The second one is task, and task is uh, ways in which we do the activity. So it's the different ways in which young people might perform a particular uh, skill or activity. And so all of those different ways can be modified. We can make a task more complex or we can make it simpler. Um, we can look at ways of breaking down skills in order for uh, a task to be more accessible to a wider range of, of young people. Uh, the third part of the step adaptation tool is equipment. Now we can uh, use regular equipment in a modified way. We can make adaptations to uh, um, regular equipment or we can use specifically adapted equipment or <clears throat> create modified and adapted equipment from materials we may have to hand uh, around the home or around the uh, uh, whatever it is we're we're working. So we uh, we can uh, apply changes to the equipment in lots of different ways. And finally, uh, people, and this is the important aspect, uh, and that's maybe the way that people interact with each other. It could be team numbers. We can vary the team numbers. We don't always have to have equal teams, five against five. We may decide to have seven against three, uh, and that may create a balanced activity. Seven people working together uh, who have a lower uh, skill level against three people who have a higher skill level but have to work very hard against the seven. So uh, we can uh, balance uh, the, the, um, the activity by looking at, for instance, uh, team numbers. So each of these different areas uh, in the step uh, adaptation tool, we can make changes to in order to make an activity more inclusive. And I'll try to look at these in the examples that we're going to uh, discuss. Now, uh, just I want to say that, of course, all teachers and coaches adapt and modify. You adapt for age or for competence or for the interest levels of uh, young people in a particular activity. So uh, adaptation is not an unfamiliar concept to teachers and coaches. It's something that you do almost uh, subconsciously all the time. 
all I, I, I'm encouraging you to do is to apply something like step or just apply your common sense in order uh, to open up the activities that you are delivering to a wider range of ability. So let's look at uh, target games. Probably one of the most well-known target games in the world is the game of golf, invented in Scotland, where I'm from. But golf can be created in an indoor or outdoor space. You can use uh, a bean bag, you can try uh, using paper balls, or even a pair of socks rolled up into a ball shape. And as it's based on golf and involves throwing, I call it throlf. So using available equipment and uh, household items you might have around the home, uh, you can recreate a game based on golf. You can make the target easier for yourself or you can make it more challenging. Having the targets at different angles and distances uh, increases and varies the challenge. Be as imaginative as you can, make the uh, targets interesting. And also, like golf, you can create uh, obstacles or hazards to make each target hole more challenging. So an important aspect of adaptation is to try and mirror the rules of the game upon which the adapted version is based. So here as in golf, you play your next shot from where the paper ball lands. If the ball uh, lands on a hazard such as the water or into a bunker, then a stroke is added on to the player's score. And as in golf, you're trying to get round in the least possible number of shots. Similarly, we can also improvise the Paralympic sport of boccia. As in many games, boccia is based on a rectangular playing area. Now, if you don't have regulation boccia balls, you can easily improvise them, our good old friends the paper balls, and just paint them with cheap poster paints to create two colours and therefore two teams or two individuals. And then we can play in whatever space is available, either outdoors or indoors. Now I often feel that target games are a good place to start for some young people because they are playing from a static position. They don't have to think about movement and they can focus on ways of propelling the ball, for example, whether it's an underarm throw, whether it's an overarm throw, a dart type throw, or pushing it with the foot or using an assistive device. Okay, next let's look at net and wall games. And here I think we need to start with uh, developing control and coordination. Can you balance an object on either a racket or on your hand. Then introducing some movement, make the activity more challenging. And then finally trying to see if you can play first of all using just the hand with a slow moving object like a balloon. So moving from balance and control to playing and controlling a moving ball or lightweight object. And then it's finding versions of the activity that can suit different abilities. Some players may go closer to the net using a much slower moving balloon or beach ball. Or we can adapt the rules for mixed abilities. Two bounces for the wheelchair user and one for the standing player. Sitting volleyball is another Paralympic sport with a reduced playing area to reflect uh, the player mobility. But again, the game can be played in any available space and using improvised equipment. 
Volley All is an example of an improvised volleyball version where players of different abilities can play together. Standing and seated players remain in their own front and rear zones. For striking and fielding games, I'm going to use the example of T-Ball. So this is a game loosely based on baseball, which uh, again enables players who have different abilities to play together. And to enable this to work, uh, some of the rule adaptations include, for example, players traveling different distances to score a run so they don't necessarily have to travel all the way around all the bases in order to score so players play according to the rules for them so the game continues with everyone participating together but players of different abilities have different rules applied to the way that they play and of course, you can apply this concept to any game, any sport. And fielders can catch the batter on any base, not necessarily the base they are running towards. If you think about some striking fielding games, half of the participants are inactive. They're waiting to bat. Uh, whereas this version, follow the leader, means that both teams, the batters and the fielders, are active all the time. When the batter hits the ball, the whole team runs and simultaneously the fielding team perform a skill, passing the ball around everyone in the team. So all the batting team run and all the fielding, fielding team are involved in passing the ball. So finally under invasion games we're going to look first at football and then later a hockey adaptation. Most of these participants are young people who have intellectual impairments and the key here is to practice skills without and then with the ball. It's important to enable young people to feel comfortable and being able to move in control before they start to add the ball skills to their movement skills and if these skills can be turned into games then it's more interesting for the participants this game is about responding to the instructions of the coach or here the players work in pairs to pass the ball through a succession of gates then gradually the activities begin to reflect the skills needed in the game itself it's important not to be too fixed about how young people play the game because they'll find their own ways of adapting the skills, enabling them to participate. In this shooting game, the distances to the targets can be varied, the width of the targets can be varied, and the way in which people play the ball can be varied. So finally a look at a uh, hockey variation. Hockey involves a lot of moving and interaction. But bench hockey enables young people to practice stick skills, manipulation skills, controlling the ball in a fixed position. So they can practice playing the ball, controlling the ball and working together as a team before movement is introduced and the play takes place in a bigger space. And of course for some players who may have mobility impairments or control and coordination impairments, this may be their version of hockey. This may be the opportunity to play a version of the game. So uh, that's been a quick whistle stop tour of four games, family areas. Uh, and um, just to conclude, uh, don't forget to check out the Inclusion Club. The Inclusion Club is the web platform that uh, my colleague Peter Downs and, uh, and I launched uh, 10 years ago, uh, around about this time of the year, 10 years ago, uh, at, at the Symposium on Adapted Physical Activity um, in Paris. And uh, Pete is the webmaster and does all the hard work. And uh, I, I guess I try and encourage people to look at the uh, site. There's lots of video-based, mostly video-based uh, articles and stories, 
which give you lots of ideas on how you can continue to adapt and open up your activities and what you teach and coach to a wider range of young people. So check it out. <laughs>